This time on Bonafide Bus, Eric and I hike the Valley of Fire, find an insane boondocking spot, and take the paddleboard out to explore Lake Mead. As you may know from our previous episode, we were just in Las Vegas. Eric has another flight to catch in a week for work, so we decided to save some gas and explore some relatively close spots. The Valley of Fire boasted a handful of noteworthy hikes and several boondocking spots just outside the park. A win-win in our book. We come from a land of lakes, the Great Lakes in fact. This rocky, dry, and vast scenery felt unfamiliar, almost otherworldly, and fueled our excitement as we drove in for a day hike. So Eric and I are in Nevada. We're at the Valley of Fire State Park. Had no idea what to expect from this place, um, but we're already really pleased with what we've drone, driven through. Um, we are at the Fire Wave Trailhead. It's only like a mile and a half long, but we're really stoked, so let's hit it. The park is only 45 miles northeast of Las Vegas, so if you're looking to get away from the city, it would make an excellent day trip. We started with the Fire Wave to Pink Canyon Loop. The Fire Wave itself is a huge sandstone formation that looks like an ocean wave of swirling red, white, and pink. Its creation dates back to the Jurassic period over 200 million years ago. This area was entirely underwater, and what we see today is the remnant of the sand left behind by the wind after inland seas subsided and the land rose. park, there was one more stop we had to make. The basket makers created these petroglyphs 2,500 years ago, and it was still clear what several of them depicted. We silently stared, trying to imagine human life here long ago. Imagine leaving something behind that continues to make people pause thousands of years from now. So Valley of Fire was super cool, definitely exceeded our expectations, but we do have to get just a little bit of work done today. So we found a little local library 20 minutes outside of the park, and this is where we will be uh, until it closes. 
Our constant search for Wi-Fi is undoubtedly the biggest hassle of nomadic living. Libraries are super underrated. They're free, they're quiet, and overall a great place to get work done. After closing down the library, we headed to Lake Mead. We had no prior inclination of what the lake is like, but iOverlander ensured that the area had wonderful views and plenty of open space. We weren't sure what to expect, but this was a boondocking spot unlike any other that we've encountered. Good morning, you guys. I'm just finishing packing us some lunches. Um, we woke up at Lake Mead. Yesterday we explored the Valley of Fire, and now we found water in the desert, and we're gonna take the paddleboard out today. All right, so I got our bikes down. Got our little setup for the day. Got the paddleboard down. And this is what we woke up to this morning. So I packed us a little picnic. We're gonna take the paddleboard in a little cove and have lunch. We're gonna pack all of our stuff in this waterproof Ignite bag. We're not sponsored by them, but they wanted us to test their products, so we'll see how it goes. Um, also, look at the spot that we woke up in this morning. So we've got our own little private beach and launch zone. The water is cold, but it's super clear. We can see down all the rocks and everything. We've been watching little ducks meander around. We're gonna get the paddleboard blown up and see if we can find like a really secluded little nook somewhere to have lunch. And we can see our house from here. Hi, boss. Keep going, honey, you're doing great. There we go. That's more like it. We're taking off. Cue the drone. <laughs> lake Mead is not a naturally formed lake. It was created by the Hoover Dam, which rerouted the Colorado River to supply water to the developing region. It's the largest reservoir in the United States and stretches from Nevada to Arizona. Today, it supports a variety of wildlife, including many different species of birds and fish, as well as larger animals like bighorn sheep, burros, and coyotes. Wave! waterproof. <laughs> Camera's in there. Drone's, Drone's in, in there. there. Your phone. Our lunch. Feels really good to be out on the water. We've been looking at the water, sunset, sunrise. It's been so beautiful, but it's really, really nice and kind of thrilling to actually be out here. I also love paddle boarding with Eric because this is usually what happens. I sit in the front and he does all the paddling in the back. <laughs> Makes for a very relaxing experience. <laughs> Here we go. This looks perfect. Watch out for these rocks. This is perfect. This is perfect. Look how clear the water is. Land ho! <laughs> what? Oh my gosh, Eric, don't get stuck in it. Don't get stuck in it. This is. Maybe we should find a different spot. It's too good to be true. 
sinkhole spot was a bust. <laughs> <laughs> this looks much rockier <laughs> and less sinky. Nice little parking spot. Thanks for the ride. Sure thing. <laughs> All right, so I want to give you guys a quick rundown of this waterproof bag. Thank you, Ignite, for shooting this over. Um, it only has two pockets. This is a water resistant little pocket on the outside. We put our keys in there and then there's the one big scuba zipper. That's 100% waterproof. I have it inflated right here so you can see it's all poofed up. And then my drone is inside. So we're giving it the full dunk test. It's a little clay right here. And uh, let's see how she goes. Give it a good one. And also, if we ever tip over in the paddleboard, we have a life raft right here. But yeah, this is a pretty cool bag. You have like backpack straps and then this center grab handle um, and tons of mounting points everywhere. Definitely not gonna be something that you like backpack in super intensely. There's a lot of like missing comforts and then, uh, you know, the one zipper on this side isn't the easiest. But uh, for waterproof stuff and like snow, paddle, lake stuff, it's a sweet product. All right, let's see if the drone's dry. Oh, yeah. If I can find it. See, this is kind of the problem with the one zipper is like <laughs> just a big empty vast hole. Nice. She's dry, our blankets are dry. So thanks again, Ignite. Um, they sent us a couple of their little portable chargers too, which are sick. Good for like the GoPro and stuff, but you guys can find this available in I believe two to three months. And uh, yeah, we'll put a link in the description and probably see it more. It's a pretty sick product. It's important for us to intentionally carve time to go on dates. We're together almost 24 seven, but there's a big difference between day to day time together and making an effort. Not every date is this elaborate. Sometimes we just listen to music and make dinner together. Overall, it helps us appreciate each other more and definitely makes us happy. Are you pulling the car around for me? What a gentleman. This is a nice little date, hon. It was. Cute little picnic. So we went from desert to lake. And this is just the kind of stuff that honestly makes me feel just so thankful for everything that we have and what we're doing. Big time. I love ya. We are truly spoiled. Bye, little picnic spot. Definitely calm down. Faster! <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> I do have the power to... Oh. <laughs> <gasps> well, well, well. What a beautiful bus that is. <laughs> That plane just dropped those guys. How cool is that? That was so cool. The sun is starting to get low on the horizon, so I think we're just gonna hang out for the rest of the night, maybe get some work done, and hopefully do a little campfire. We covered a lot of ground in a few days. The desert is a truly interesting and unique landscape. Exploring a completely different and vast habitat made it that much more refreshing to get out on the water. 
the unknown and newness of it all really got us excited for the next few weeks, which will be full of different desert adventures. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you next time.